let us pray. Loving and eternal Heavenly Father, we come this morning to give you thanks and to praise your most precious name. Father, in the name of your Son, the Holy Spirit, and ministering angels, we want to worship you at this time. It is indeed a privilege that you have made it possible whereby despite the challenges that are around us, we can actually come together this, in this form to proclaim the everlasting gospel and to lift you and lift you up high and praise your worthy name. And so, dear Lord, I ask at this time that your Holy Spirit will guide and protect. You will restrain the force of the evil one. Dear Lord, you will allow your Holy Spirit to be the influencing one among us so that whatever needs to be heard, dear Lord, will be heard. We will pray for those who are sick, those who are weary, those who are getting discouraged, those who, dear Lord, who are halting between two opinions. I pray that they will recognize that now is the time, Father, for decision to be made because your coming is imminent. And so I want to pray in a very special way that the person whom you have spoken to speak to us at this time will be energized. You will speak to him and you will speak through him so that Heavenly Father, the words that he shall actually impart will be words that you want us to hear at this time and they will take root in our souls so that it will make a difference. I pray that at the end of any kind of religious experience, as we remain focused, looking forward, dear Lord, to your soon coming, may none of us who have the genuine desire to spend eternity with you, may we not be disappointed. May we not choose, dear Lord, to go elsewhere. So we want to give you thanks and we ask that you will lead out now. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. My dear friends, throughout this week we were thrilled to focus on some of the benefits derived from prayer. Those we highlighted were. Prayer helps us to establish a relationship with God. Of course, we know that God's nature is love. It informs us of God's plans and will for our lives. It strengthens us spiritually and it increases our faith. In this final episode, we will look at how prayer helps us to be like Jesus which should be our ultimate goal. It was in our of solitary prayer that Jesus in his earthly life received wisdom and power. In Mark 1.35, it says thus, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed in a solitary place and there prayed. Practicing a Christ-centered life will only happen when we are constant in prayer. To be like Jesus, this is the goal set forth by John the Beloved. In 1 John 2 verse 6, he says, Whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk even as he walked. Peter added in 1 Peter 2 21, Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. In the book, To Be Like Jesus, page five, Ellen White says that our pattern, Jesus, depended on prayer. Jesus is my precious savior, she uttered. I want to copy the pattern. How exact in principle and upright in conduct was he? He gave no place to Satan when he was tempted. 
how wide awake he had to be to discern the tempter's wiles. Oh, if we would only walk and work as Jesus worked, how strict would be all our transactions with believers and non-believers. How tender, how charitable, how meek, how lowly of heart would we become because we have leaned on him. How dimly though we reflect the glory of our Lord. Friends, we need to behold him more steadfastly so that by beholding, we may be changed. To be like Jesus should be our theme. Beloved, John says in 1 John 3, 2 to 3, we are God's children. We are his children now. And it has not yet appeared what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Amen. Who oh, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, he was heard because of his godly fear. That Hebrews 2, Hebrews 5, verse 7. First Peter 2, 9 reminds us. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we are constant in prayer, we will exhibit the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5.22 reminds us that the fruit of the spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Therefore, we ought to be imitators of God as his beloved children, that's Ephesians 5 verse 1. Brethren, let's remember that we have been crucified with Christ, but it's no longer us who live, but Christ lives in us. And the life that we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Be like Jesus. This should be our song. Be like Jesus in home and in the throng. Be like Jesus all day long. We should be like Jesus. In Luke 18 verse 1, Jesus says, Men ought always to pray and not sing. Let us therefore, our brethren, friends, let us therefore be constant in prayer. Let us pray, pray. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for this penultimate session in our week of spiritual emphasis. By now you would have learned that he is from the parish of Westmoreland and studied theology at Northern Caribbean University. He is a young man who has saturated himself in the words of God and discharges them with a lot of energy conviction, and passion. The Lord has been using him mightily to proclaim or to echo the everlasting good news summarized in the three angels' messages. And I'm sure this morning he will continue in that vein. I would like for us to offer a silent prayer, pray him up, that the Lord will speak to him, speak through him as he discharges his responsibilities. At this moment, just before he comes to us and actually speaks to us on God's behalf, our hearts will be prepared by musical item 
from Sister Dawn Ellis. Amen. What a beautiful song. Gold is but goodies. These are the old, old songs. Some of the young people in this chat won't understand. But I remember my grandmother singing these songs. I don't pray enough. I don't do enough. If I don't even love my neighbor as myself, then you will find yourself in problem. I learned that if you are not loving your neighbor, if you are not doing enough, then you will find that you are planning to go to heaven but you are at the next place. I don't have to call the place name, but we are so glad that this morning we are back at his feet. We are back at his feet to learn about him, to speak to him and to ask him for him to do what we can do for ourselves. And that one thing is to save us from our infirmities. I must say it is and it was and it will forever be a wonderful privilege to speak to you all. You have become a part of my family, a good uh, a place to look or a good place to be with the Montego Bay people. Uh, I must say thanks to Sister Thelma Vassiana for her wonderful words of introduction. A lady that when she speaks, she has a way of throwing her words. I don't know if it's the English, uh, the, 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 the little foreignness behind it, but something about the, the way she finessed her words uh, makes words sound sweet. Also want to say thanks 
to Sister Forbes Williams for her. Uh, every morning I look forward to her. You see, when Sister Forbes done uh, um, finished speaking, then you could have said, uh, guess what, we know about prayer now. We understand how we are to pray now, but we are so glad that now we are going to listen to the words of God as we continue. I must say, as it has come to an end, let not it be the end of your prayer life. Let not it be the end of your experience with God, but you may seek to get a closer and a closer and a closer relationship until that day when you can say like Paul, it is finished. I have run my race and I have finished my course. Let yeah. it be that you are trying to get closer and closer to him. This morning, for the few minutes that I have, I know I am bad at time. I'm getting really bad at time. That, that, that for the few minutes that I have, we'll be looking under the caption, when the two sevens clash when i was a little boy and every time my father i i, I tell you my father used to have a son and every time when it was about clash time in the community you hear they play one simple song when the two sevens clash when the two, i'm not preaching about the world now but give the preacher Dance. Give the preacher a few minutes and then you will understand what he is saying. When the two sevens clash, meaning that the two forces have finally met, the two forces are now face to face and now it is showdown. Now it is it. Now it is a final moment of earth history. When the two sevens clash, bow your heads with me as we pray to our Father, loving God and King. How excellent is your name in all the earth. We are so glad that at your name ever need shall bow ever tongue shall confess that jesus is lord and we're so happy father that you would have sent your son and your senior minister and angel the minister unto us help us now to open our minds speak to me speak through me even now we pray amen amen when the two sevens clash yes sir from uh, the beginning of the week we started by looking at the three angels message on sabbath we started there and we went on to look at what the second angel had to say and yesterday we started at the third angel's message and if you are a good bible student or if you have never known before i'll let you know now there are more angels that speak after these three angels if you read on over into chapter 15 you will find that there are there are seven angels that are speaking however these three angels are the uh, has the message that tell earth before earth reaches its doom. These three angels are telling people just before the fourth angels come in, before the angels are at the end, before the last four angels come, the last four angel will be coming when judgment would have already been opened. That there is no more repentance after the last third angel's message. So we are proclaiming the three angels' message. For you to understand that you have but a limited time, that you have but a season to be forgiven. And we even saw yesterday when we started, we started to talk about the three angels' message. And we, when you look at the third angel's message, you find out one thing that now it is a, a whole lot of condemnation, that now that there is not much mercy, that mercy is being lessened and lessened as it goes down even as he, he, he is speaking even as the angel is proclaiming you find out that judgment is now at hand and people are to run for their life that people need to get themselves wrapped up and tied up in Jesus here is what the bible says even when we reach to verse 11, because if somebody was saying yesterday, it seems as if pastor can't read. Because when he sees a colon, that means the statement that comes after are joined with what was being said before. But here is what the Bible says at verse 11. Now we are looking at verse 11. Here is what it says. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And there were there have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark in his name or of his name rather uh, here is what we said yesterday that he, people are to understand that if you are not worshiping god then you are worshiping the devil if you're not worshiping god you are worshiping something that is mixed up and tied up in devil in worshiping if you're not worshiping the true and living god how he set out to worship or uh, the 
altars that he set it out, you are automatically going against God. We said yesterday that the truth is that the devil is fighting for worship. We heard that he said in Ezekiel that he would ascend up into heaven. He wants to be like the Most High himself. Ah, but here is what some people are saying, that it is one God we are worshiping. The truth is there is only one God here. There is only one true and living way of worshiping God. But the truth is there are many gods around us and sometimes we get confused in the way we worship God. We are talking about worshiping God, but it's only lip, lip service because our actions are far from God because we are following the mindset of the world. Here is what the Bible says. Here is the problem that we face because these people who worship not according to the way that God would have outlined, these people who do not obey and trust and obey will not be a part of God's kingdom because their torment will be ascending up forever and ever. Ah, some people want to say that means hellfire will burn forever. It doesn't mean that. It means that it, the people who will not obey God's will, their doom there will be one that will be remembered in history, but it will not last forever as in the fire burning forever and ever. It means therefore that you and I can find a plan of escape or a way of escape God would have already made it but here is what the Bible says when you are when you are looking at the last angel's message of the three angels message the third angel rather you find out that he started by telling that there is a doom day ahead there is a day that every he shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Yes, there is a day. There is a day when everybody will get their pay. There is a day that everything shall come to its final iota, that everything shall reach to its final climax. And then you are saying, preacher, when I hear the third angel's message, it seems as if it is nothing but doom. It is nothing but heartache and pain. It seems as if there is nothing but crying. It seems as if there there is nothing but hurt. It seems as if there is nothing but heartaches and more heartaches. But well, here is what the Bible says in verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they which keep the commandments of God and have and the faith of Jesus. I wish somebody would have understood. I wish I was at church. But here is what the Bible says. Here are they which have not corrupted the words of God. Here are they who are still in the living, still living to the thus say to Lord. Here are they who are saying the Ten Commandments is still good enough to help me to walk better with God. Here are they who understand that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is sudden destruction. Here are they which have said that take the word, but give me Jesus. All its joys are but a name. Here are they who would have suffered enough in this world, we're expecting that God will give them their reward. Here are they who are saying that yes, the world is tempting, but I rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Here are they who are saying that yes, the world looks good, but I understand that God has gone to prepare a place that is much better because my eyes have not seen yet, neither have it entered into my imagination. Here are they who are saying, I rather leave riches on earth to be rich in Christ. Here are they who are saying, I rather suffer how as Christ has suffered because I understand just like Sister Paul reminds us that I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live and yet I live. I live because of him who reigns within me. Ah, here are they who are saying, I am gonna give it up so I can live it up. Here are they who are saying, I will not accommodate uh, the world with Jesus' word. Here are they who are saying, I want to be set apart. The truth is, when you read Revelation, 
you understand that yes, everything must come to an end. But can I tell you, rejoice, rejoice, oh Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujah, because it is at this time that your reward is even. But I hear that our reward is closer than we ever think. That each morning you get up and you hear a bad news, you can turn to God and say, Thank you for your words, because indeed your words are true. But I'm thanking you because my reward is even closer than I think because my grandfather tell me it's only a foolish man who works and don't want to get his pay can I tell you just as how the devil will get his pay God will reward you for being faithful when the two sevens clash God is a God who says I am going to reward those who are faithful but to those who are living in opposition to my thus say the Lord they will reap their reward fret not yourself of evil do I keep on reminding you but here is the word the, what the Bible says that the are some people who are going to run to God and hear in God what God say in vain do they worship me teaching the commandments or the doctrine of men you see we have come to a point where righteousness cannot be right doing anymore because people ain't knowing what is right nor wrong hear what they are saying that anything and anything can go but God is saying here are there which would have kept my commandment and some people are saying that commandments are done away with if commandment has done away with then there is no need for a Montego Bay church there is no need for a Baptist church there is no need for a Pentecostal church because if the commandments are done away with then grace itself would have been done away with then mercy would not be obtainable then everything would have been for a waste of time it would have been better that you and I be out in the world the Bible says come out of her my people the Bible Bible is calling us and if the Bible is God is not slack if God would have left us without instruction he cannot condemn us the Bible is so specific that the Bible tell you in the last exact hours of earth history the proclamation will be here are they which have kept the commandment there is a separation being made between those who are of the devil and those who are of God here are they which would have kept the commandment and they which are on the other side are those who would have been walking towards the idea of which the beast would have pushed out for people to live by and here are they which I would have understand those who would have come to the realization that there is a way that seems right unto the man but here are they which have said we are going to walk the straight and narrow path though it is rugged though it is rough I'm gonna walk and talk with Jesus I'm gonna keep up his blood stained banner I'm gonna tell it like it is because people will hate me but God will love me I hear that in 2021 man's idea is to save their life not to serve God people are giving money when God is saying I would rather not for you to give sacrifice but for you to sacrifice your life but here is what the Bible says if you love your life you're gonna lose it that is the straight up thing if you love your life the truth is you're gonna lose it but if you lose your life in Jesus if you lose your life for Jesus's sake then you will rise to eternity here is what the Bible having said that there are some people gonna come in the last days in St. Matthew St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 through to 23 it tells us that in those hours that there are many who is going to come to Jesus and says Lord Lord but he say guess what no 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 depart from me I know you're not but here's what they're gonna say many in that day shall say Lord how have we not prophesied in your name? There are many prophets out in 2021. Many people who are telling you they can see the future, but their prophecies are not in accordance to God. Ah, oh, God, didn't we prophesy in your name? 
And didn't we even cast out demons? We are doing our works. We are good at works. But with our works was just to show ourselves. But here is what the Bible shall say. We are, hear what they say. And they went on to tell God. You see, you cannot appease to God. You cannot tell God what he doesn't know. There is nothing that he don't know already. And there's nothing that you will do that will take him by surprise. But here is what they will say. God, we have done it. We were at Monte Gobe day after day but our minds were on you but we were there God we were there at the prayer meeting we were there when the pastor would have prayed we were the one who said the loudest amen we were the one who was there when we went out in the street we were the ones who were there when everybody was running from you but the Bible is saying do not only be there but be in Christ I will say that day after day night after night for you to get it don't just be in in church be in Christ because church people will go to hell just the same ah you don't get the, the only people who will make it are those who are living a life but church people ah you may not understand yet but there are many church people who will be going to in that day they will run to him saying Lord, Lord, Lord. And he was saying, I don't know you. I know not whence you came from. But they are saying, Lord, let me remind you who I am. I am Jabalin Billings. I was the one who preached to Monte Gobe. I get up in the morning, six o'clock, and I pray to you. I call out your name. I shout your name from the tip of my lip. And I shout your name. But he says, your heart wasn't right with me. Depart from me. I know you not. He workers of iniquity the bible says that in that day when he shall say to the fourth angel when he shall say to the sixth and the seventh angel when he shall say to the fifth angel trust in thy sticker reap because the harvest is already ripe he shall say uh, trust in thy sticker no man shall have a chance to run again but he says trust in that sticker here is what you need to do run now while you have the opportunity pray now while you still have knees pray now while you still have a voice pray now while you still have repentance ground pray now because the day is coming when the two sevens clash when he shall say to one group i know you not while he says shall say to one come me workers who would have endured much hardship, who would have endured much persecution. I tell you, if you're trying to live too comfortable in 2021, if you're not trying to live with the assurance that Jesus is yours, then you have a problem. I know my time is going. I'm going to end now. But here are they, which would have endured much. And now God is going to give you the reward. I tell you, God loves to give reward. But more than just giving blessing in this life, I learned that one of the biggest deception that the devil have us thinking is that when your life is smooth, when you have that big car, that big house, that big, that is when you are with Christ, when you are blessed. Hence, there are many prosperity gospels today. So a seed of faith. So uh, give up what you have in God. Yes, God wants you to give up what you have. But what God wants you to give up is your sin sick life. God wants you to give it up so he can make you live it up. God wants you to cast your burdens on him. But the truth is, as a preacher once says, if you're not enduring problem in this life, then you need to get some. You will not be comfortable in this life because the devil hates you. If you'd never know, hashtag pastor said, the devil hates you, but God loves you. This morning, as we would have come to a close, we're so glad that we have a God who loves us, that he wants us to be with him. He loves us so much that he prepares food, clothing, a new home and a place where there will be no more tears in my eyes. Hallelujah. Somebody missed that. Ah, God has prepared a place where tears will never stay. The tears won't ever run from my eyes because he would have wiped all the tears away and there will be joy beyond compare. This morning, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you all that you may continue to rest believing in his words. Keep on trusting. Only trust him. Only trust him now. We're going to pray. Loving Father, 
it is so sweet to trust you, but even as humans, sometimes it is hard to trust you when we see all this happening. It is hard to believe when we see evidence pointing in different places. We ask even now that you may increase our faith. We, rem we were reminded throughout this week that faith and fear cannot walk together. Sister Forbes reminded us of that, that wheresoever there is fear, that faith will be diminished. We pray even now that you may remove fear from us, that even though we step into a future, even as we step into a day, even as somebody is going to work and they are uncertain as to what will happen today, we pray that you may give them a faith like yours that looks into impossibility and sees possibilities that look into nothing and see something coming but we pray even so god that while we are looking into a world that is dying that we may seek ye the loss and we may entreat them that they may come to you before it's eternally too late help us dear father that we may work for the night is coming that we may work before it's before we cannot do any more work we pray even now for your people Forgive us for many sins, we pray. Amen.